Hi, my name is David Wells. Uh, I'm 29 years old and I'm from Atlanta, Georgia, USA. All right, so what do I do here in Yekaterinburg? I teach English at a language center and in my free time, I also perform in a band and we travel around Russia sometimes and we perform for people. What did I know about Russia before I came here? Uh, that there is St. Petersburg and Moscow, like most foreigners probably. I didn't know about any other cities. I had never heard of Yekaterinburg before. So yeah, I knew very little uh, just from what I had heard and seen in movies that Russia is a very cold country and that there aren't a lot of colors, that the buildings are gray and dark. The thing that surprised me the most, the first time I came to Yekaterinburg, I believe it was in 2007, and as soon as I got off the plane, it was June, so it was summertime, it started snowing, and I thought, there's no way I'm ever moving to Russia because it snows in the summer. What would I suggest for my friends to do here in Yekaterinburg? What do I think they would enjoy doing? Um, I think I would advise them to visit the banya because that's something that I really enjoy doing myself and it's something that's completely different from American culture. We don't have the banya in American culture. We have saunas, but usually you find saunas in sports gyms and people go for five or 10 minutes after they work out. And so in Russia, the banya is a, a complete experience. It's something that you go for hours. You know, you can go with your friends, you can have long, deep conversations about life and get to know one, an one another better. And so I would definitely um, tell them to go to the banya and have that experience. What would I show my friends in Yekaterinburg? I would definitely take them to Platinka just because I think all year round it's a beautiful place. Um, whether it's in the wintertime and it's frozen and you can walk across it, or in the summertime and you can uh, go in a boat uh, and just enjoy looking at the city from a different perspective. I would also recommend for them to go to Park Mayakovskoa because I feel like there's a lot of different attractions that they can see there, different things. It's a beautiful park, a big park to walk around in. And also another one of my favorite places that I would uh, recommend for them to go is to Mitya Gorka because it's a great place where you can go and kind of be above the city and get a good view of what the city looks like. All right, so what in Russia was strange or unexpected for me coming here? Uh, I would say one of my first experiences was during the summer, again, when I was swimming uh, with some of my Russian friends out in a lake somewhere, and a storm started coming in, and there was thunder and lightning. And in America, they always tell us if there's a storm, if there's lightning, that you need to get out of the water, because if it strikes the water, you could die. And in Russia, no one seemed to be disturbed by the fact that there was a storm. People were swimming, they were having fun, people were laughing. So I thought, oh my goodness, we need to get out of the water. And everyone was like, everything's fine. There's no reason to get out of the water. Nothing will happen. And so that was very strange to me at first, just to see how the mentality of Russians and Americans is very different when it comes to something as simple as swimming during a storm. My most memorable New Year's, I would say, Probably my first, I think, or maybe it was the second year that I was here for New Year's, and my friends thought it would be a good idea to go to the ice city in the center of the city. And I thought, why not? I haven't been there yet. It would be great to see Ice Town. Um, but we got there, I don't know, maybe around 11 o'clock at night or something, and there were a lot of people, not just from Yekaterinburg, but from other cities, and everybody wanted to take pictures with me. and so. I wasn't, even, I wasn't even able to walk five steps into the entrance. We were taking pictures for probably about 15 minutes and it was just ridiculous, one person after the next. And so finally my friends were like, we're getting out of here, this is ridiculous, we're going home. And so 
I didn't get to see Ice City that year. So that was a really memorable New Year's experience for me. So I know now not to go to Ice City on New Year's. In America, our biggest holiday, I would say, is Christmas that we celebrate, whereas in Russia, the biggest holiday is New Year's. So in America, we have Santa Claus, and usually, as children, you go to a mall uh, where you line up, and there's his little elves that, you know, Santa's little helpers, and children go one by one, and they sit on Santa's lap, and they say, oh, Santa, I would really love it if this year you would bring me, you know, uh, a train set for Christmas, or I'd love it if you could bring me the new Xbox or something. The difference, I would say, is that children in Russia, they might have to actually do something for their presents. In America, we just tell Santa what we want, and we say, okay, Santa, great, bring me this. And in Russia, they might have to uh, say a, a poem from memory or sing a song in order for Santa to promise them to bring something for them. So that's a big difference. And in America, we have Santa Claus and we have his wife, Mrs. Claus, and in Russia, they have Diet Maroz and Snigurichka. Uh, we don't, we're not really big into toast, I would say, for Christmas or for New Year's in America. Whereas in Russia, toast are very important. Toast are very crucial, I think, to the Russian culture. And people can go on with toast for a very long time, you know, wishing happiness, wealth, success, um, a family, you know, lots and lots of money, different things. And so, I like that about Russian culture, that, you know, Russians love to wish one another um, different things. But for me, it's difficult because when it's my turn to do a toast, I never know what to say because I'm like, we don't do toast in America. Even on birthdays, it's difficult for me to do toast because I'm like, happy birthday. Three things that you definitely have to do in order for it to be an official, real New Year's. You have to have mandarins on the table, and the table has to be filled with all sorts of salads. Olivier, pachubay, uh, I don't even know the names of all the salads. Crab salad, but there has to be lots and lots of food. There has to be mandarins. Um, there has to be a Christmas tree, obviously, um, in order for it to be or a New Year's tree, excuse me, in order for it to be New Year's. And you have to listen to the, the president's speech. I mean, you can't start the new year without bringing in the new year properly. Everyone listens to the speech. And so I feel like those are three things that everyone in Russia does, unless you're sleeping, of course, but hopefully no one's sleeping when the new year is coming. <laughs> The new year, 2016, is coming very soon, and I would love to wish each and every one of you lots of love and success and happiness in the new year, that the new year will be bigger and brighter than the past year, and that all of your dreams and wishes will come true. And I'd like to leave you with a little song to send you off on your merry way. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, Oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night, when Christ was born, O oh, 
night divine oh night oh night divine